hello everyone so very glad that uh, uh, all of you have joined on youtube live today for the evening uh, about the program my dream iit making it a reality uh, so we have uh, many students joining on youtube live and also we have a uh, guest of honor uh, mr kn sachinarayana sir uh, he is a director of iit tirupati and also we have keynote speaker mr amalam das uh, so we'll be beginning the program soon uh, with a short introduction about arjuna yes so arjuna group uh, you you all have been in touch with arjuna group through the various services uh, all of you have experience with us so again we are meeting again today here uh, just a short introduction about it so we give value education for teenagers throughout india uh, at different places and also we do career counseling and mentoring students and distribute wisdom literatures and also we have arjuna homes and so these are the uh, few statistics about uh, the services which we have rendered uh, 8 years of relentless service 1000 plus student gatherings addressed 60000 wisdom plus wisdom books distributed and 3 3 lakh plus students interacted through various gatherings across india in last 8 years and yes so today uh, the keynote speaker uh, he is actually the founder and ceo of arjuna group he is a motivational speaker author and educationalist and he have uh, authored these three books art of concentration in the age of distractions time management and career choices in pipeline and he is a uh, well invited speaker in different colleges throughout india as as you see different iits as well as nits and universities and yes he is appreciated by eminent personalities as you see here uh, mr kiran bedi mrs kiran bedi uh, first lady ips officer of india and also governor of pondicherry and mr venkaiah naidu honorable vice president of india his efforts have been appreciated uh, and many uh, others as well many academicians and also uh, the toppers of the country uh, have appreciated sir's effort in serving student community so yes so also uh, i would briefly introduce about the guest of honor uh, mr kn sachinarayana sir today uh, who is present here uh, Uh, sir, uh, yes, I will introduce about him. Just a second. Sir, uh, sir is a currently director of IIT Tirupati, Andhra Pradesh. He has been professor in the building, technology, and construction management division of Department of Civil Engineering at IIT Madras. Uh, he has been professor there for more than twenty six, twenty five years, <laughs> and now uh, currently, sir is director uh, of IIT Tirupati. and sir has uh, received his btech degree from civil engineering in iit madras and he then received his ms and phd degrees with specialization in construction engineering and engineering uh, in construction engineering and management from clemson university usa he has been a faculty member yeah for many years and he he is also in 2009 he was a visiting professor at iowa state university usa and he served as a uh, various roles in iit madras as a advisor of alumni affairs and chairman of engineering unit hmm? and uh, there is a uh, iit madras research park uh, he is chairman of implementation committee for that phase 2 and he has served on various committees for setting up new campuses including iim tirichi iit indore 
and iit jodhpur and he is also chairman of academic advisory group project management institute india and is vice chairman board of advisors of the glass academy and expert member on the board of management of building materials and promotion council and also serves as a independent director on five company boards so this is a brief introduction of uh, uh, sir sachinarayan sir and uh, he has been a constant support for arjuna group uh, he always encourages all the uh, uh, members of arjuna uh, through his interactions and uh, he, he attends many events we had great interactions in, in tirupati so sir would be uh, uh, now taking over to speak few words with all of you sir kindly uh... yeah thank you jayant uh, am i audible yes sir audible sir very good thank you uh, um, so how many students do we have online approximately uh, how many we have that's okay uh, so 300 sir 300 okay. students very good very good so thank you very much uh, for this opportunity for interaction uh, you know arjuna group has been the, doing uh, 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 you know human service in terms of uh, the uh, bringing out this various publications in fact i had the opportunity to uh, read couple of them uh, including the one on uh, uh, art of concentration and the one on time management uh, for the last one i have not seen the career uh, yes, choices sir. Uh, yes, sir. Ago, uh, which jayant shared with me when he met me and also had an opportunity to couple of occasions to interact with the students in various forum where they were giving away awards and so on in tirupati uh and uh, uh you know the dedicated group of uh, iit alumni uh, including uh, uh mr samaldas jayant and a bunch of others who have taken on this uh, uh initiative to uh, interact and uh, guide uh, students uh, in their especially in the plus 2 stage to uh, prepare for the entrance exams and uh, and also give them career guidance and so on so it's a very good uh, good initiative that they have taken up including uh, uh, you know career counseling and also providing this ajna homes place for students to live while they prepare for these exams especially people coming from uh, rural semi rural areas and so on uh, that's very good and and i understand the students today or people who are preparing for various competitive exams including je age and, uh, and yes, the iit entrance and the neat also yes sir board exams uh, je exams, exams neat, neat. Yeah, yes sir yeah, great uh so um, i was just going to uh, uh talk a few points uh, uh in terms of uh, the aspirations of the students and their uh, parents uh in uh, in uh, you know achieving this dream of getting into these premier institutes in the country uh yes. whether it's an iit or uh, nits or medical schools uh, aims or jipmer or whatever uh so it's 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 a competition uh, you know in india we have uh, uh you know uh, we have quite a lot lot of institutions uh, that are catering to this uh, students and uh, of course there are premier institutions which students would like to get into and study there uh, for the kind of uh, uh, education they give you uh, the uh, the freedom of education they give you and so on uh, and also the and very often it is due to the job opportunities that they are focused on uh so what i was going to talk about today is to be uh of course to get into these institutions there's a lot of competition in fact people say that the iit entrance exam is probably one of the most competitive exams in the world uh, if you look at the percentage of students uh, making it starting from the je stage of nearly 10 lakh students taking the exams to finally about 16 17000 15 to 16000 students uh after the numbers keep uh, uh, it's in the ballpark of that area uh, making it which is about 1.5% of the students who are aspiring making it uh so so it it is it is highly competitive 
and this requires uh, because of the competition and it's not only in india we have this kinds of competition you go to countries like korea uh, uh, you know korea has a very similar system of uh, people preparing hard for this competitive exams and getting in and so on and even in countries like us where they have people take this uh, exams to get into colleges and so on of course in us you will have to prepare uh, to get into colleges they look at all various aspects not only how you do in your exams but also your other co-curricular and extracurricular activities and so on. Uh, now, so this means definitely a focused effort over a period of time. Uh, you should have your concepts very strong uh, to take these exams. Uh, you know, a lot of these coaching institutes focus on cracking the exam uh, in terms of how do you, uh, you know, crack the exam. But I think uh, 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 the students who focus more on that struggle when they come into the institutions, uh, you need to focus on how to get your uh, concepts very strong uh, and then look at how to take the exam. Of course, all these exams are time bound. You have to uh, take them uh, in a particular way so that you can finish with the requires uh, practice uh, and training to do well. So the point I would try to make here is that uh, you should work very hard on getting your concept strong. The second thing is, uh, is uh, the, the fact that uh, 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 you need to go after your passion. Okay, Very often students uh, are preparing for this because the parents want them to study something or they feel that they'll get a good job. Now, getting a good job, and because when we come for the JE, after the JE, after they get the seats, we have interaction with the faculty and staff. First thing the faculty, especially the parents, ask is, what is the placement and what are the job packages? Okay. Now, if uh, so, I, I tell them, this is not something I'm not going to answer. Okay. I would like our students to come, study well, do well, gain knowledge, and the other things will happen. Uh, so you don't start with the uh, of getting into IIT because I'm going to get a good job. Okay, you get into this institutions, premier institution, whether it's IITs or ISAs or NITs uh, and so on, to be a good engineer or a good scientist or a good uh, a doctor, uh, for which you need to uh, prepare hard once you get in. So many people think that oh, I achieved my. Uh, life's goal of by getting into IIT or getting into this. Uh, for the, and then they start cooling off and they're burnt out by their in preparation. And they're the people who struggle. So, so the, I'm just setting the, uh, the, uh, the platform or the, or the uh, you know, attitude with which you should yes, prepare sir. for this and come to these institutions is that I'm preparing hard uh, to get into these institutions with the intention of, uh, you know, gaining knowledge and being a good uh, uh, engineer or a good uh, doctor and so on, rather than looking at pay packages uh, and uh, uh, and choosing a career, choosing a field based on what is the pay package. It should be based on what is your interest. There are students with different backgrounds. There are students who relate better to courses that are uh, like mechanical civil engineering, which are more hands-on, which you see making products, making uh, things, and you get a lot of satisfaction from that. There are other students who are more uh, theory, theory oriented, they want to do, uh, and many of the students think uh, when they come in here, they really don't understand what engineering is, and uh, they have only learned math, physics, chemistry, and uh, once they come here, uh, they, they are not very clear what different engineerings are. So you please spend time to understand what different engineering fields are. So whichever field you get in, as long as you do well, of course, certain areas have, uh, have uh, great demand during periods of time. Uh, and this goes sometimes in, uh, uh, you know, uh, ups and downs, certain fields are in heavy demand, certain periods of time, and then there's a less demand. It's all related to economy and so on. So, so don't don't worry too much about all those things. Worry about doing well, and uh, and most importantly, I would say that uh, uh, focus on concepts, focus on understanding, 
understanding the concepts, understanding the uh, theory behind what you're doing rather than uh, just cracking a problem. Uh, so that is first thing that I wanted to talk about. The second thing is uh, all of us, of course, uh, you must be tired of hearing that uh, we have this term unprecedented times with this COVID uh, being around. And, uh, and uh, you know, the regular model of coaching centers where you're going and uh, staying at a place or going, to a, uh, going from your house to a coaching place. I think many of these options have sort of, uh, uh, we have challenges now uh, with this pandemic. Uh, that many of you Correct. may be having to be prepared, preparing uh, online from home, uh, online from uh, using online methodologies and so on. So this requires, uh, this will, this requires uh, that you have a good uh, internet connection, internet connection at home. And uh, you know, when the students joined us, all our classes today are online because of uh, all the students, uh, the current semester that has uh, completed uh, for the uh, existing BTEC students and the master students has been completely online. Even the next semester uh, is going to start off online. We don't know when it's going to, uh, uh, we'll be able to bring students on. And the new BTEC students joined us only in November uh, and uh, they're also completely online, right? So this is a new, so we need to adapt depending on the situation, depending on the other thing. And also from your point of view, you're staying at home now and studying. So you have the comfort of home rather than staying in cramped places uh, with a whole bunch of students. So of course you may, uh, uh, so that way you have the comfort you have, or if you're going to coaching classes and all that, you're saving time on tra traveling, uh, going up and down and so on. So this requires a different kind of planning, uh, but then you may have distractions at home. Uh, you, may have, uh, you may come from a house which had, doesn't have too much of space uh, so you need to create that space for yourself uh, to prepare uh, for these uh, courses. So this requires, this is what we call, they're calling a new normal of doing things. And as you come in, you'll find that uh, now we are talking about uh, uh, blended learning, mixed learning, where uh, as we go forward, now that faculty have got comfortable with teaching all this online way of teaching and also, so we may have uh, delivery of uh, courses and other things, both physical and part of it, some of this uh, going online and so on. So that's the way things are going to move forward. So as well, come prepared for this. Uh, so it's challenging. I know all of you are a little worried on how we're going to prepare for these exams. How are we going to, uh, uh, what is that? Uh, uh, when these exams will happen, the dates of the exams, all this, you know, been quite dynamic. Uh, hopefully with the vaccine coming in and all that. Uh, as of now, I think the JE, JE is, of course, it's going, they're doing six times this time, right? The, instead of the earlier four times or so. Uh, and then the advanced JE will probably be in the last week of June, early July. Uh, 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 when you take that. So again, your academic calendar may get a little, get a little bit uh, affected. Uh, because normally by last week of July, we start classes uh, uh, for the students, but uh, the next one also will get affected a little bit. So these are all uh, challenging times that all of us are going through uh, and you need to adapt to it uh, and work uh, within these uh, constraints. Uh, now, the other thing is uh, 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 the, uh, that uh, as you prepare hard, nothing, even if you don't make it to an IIT or the same, there are enough uh, good colleges today uh, across the country uh, where you could get in. So you should not be too disappointed uh, uh, given that there are a limited number of seats. Uh, there's always opportunities to come in for a master's at one of these uh, leading institutions uh, later on. Uh, or even you may discover that as you are going through your program, that you have other interests that emerge, which will make you look at uh, other opportunities of uh, your learning and so on. And with the new education policy coming in, uh, in fact, just before this meeting, I was in a meeting of the implementation committee of the new education policy and how we're going to think. There are going to be some changes on how we teach, bringing more flexibility to the students in the kinds of courses they can take, uh, the programs they can attend, but this will take time to implement. Maybe your batch, of students who are 
most of the students are in the first year or second year jain uh, of uh, intermediate or plus 2 plus 1 and plus 2 sir both both plus 1 and plus 2 yeah so by the time this all these things get implemented it may take some time maybe you people will look at some of this transition of how we are going to be doing this uh, there's a push for teaching in uh, local languages uh, in the institution from the uh, under the new education policy and the central government uh, so many of these things are going through a change and you will have to so things are changing very fast things are all that the point i'm making all this is you need to adapt uh with all this challenging condition new things coming in new technologies new push from the government on how education should be done what should be taught uh and so on so there are a lot of changes happening so you should be adaptable uh to uh, to uh, to these uh, changes and be prepared for it uh so with that i'll stop here uh and i would like to wish all of you the very best as you prepare uh and uh uh i have another meeting at 7 uh, o'clock so i will probably listen to part of uh, what uh, mr amal das has to say uh, and then i will uh, uh, i will not be able to stay on for the uh, later on if you're having question of the session and so on yeah so thank yes. you very much for the opportunity to interact uh, all the best to all of you yes thank you thank you very much sir for yeah. uh, uh, actually giving a, a very great uh, knowledge to the students uh telling about the concept clarity which they should have for a preparation instead of just trying to crack the examination which is very very important and you also told that they should follow their passion instead of uh, fluctuations in the means like instead of uh, just going according to the market uh, and also adapt adapting to the challenging situations so thank you so much sir so now uh, i request amal sir to join uh the evening as, as uh, i have introduced sir earlier uh in the beginning sir is a author and motivational speaker and he is the founder and ceo of arjuna group so he is present with us amal sir uh, you could please join and uh, begin your talk sir and also we have Uh, uh guest of honor uh kn sachnarayana sir along with us in the current meeting thank you sir now i hand over very good evening to everybody and especially the guest of honor sir dr satyanarayan we are very very grateful for your presence and especially i also heard the message which you gave and very apt sir uh, thank you so much for actually uh, so much motivating everybody today very grateful thank you especially what you said was very very correct that how students need to be adapting especially the times are so changing so fast that they need to be adapting uh, quite uh, they have to have that flexible mindset as you rightly said sir and uh, that was really something uh, to take home for everybody so to have rigid rigid way of thinking is something which we can say is like a blocking something blocking our success and what sir has said that not only for just this exam called as iit je or neat or any, anything else but in life we need flexibility and uh, that was very beautifully explained uh, by dr satyanarayan and uh, especially he being from iit i think you you all everybody today he, they got a perspective for uh, from uh, where they want to be and what is uh, what is expected from the institutes like iits institutes like nits or institutes like aims or any reputed institute what exactly they are looking for in an individual i believe that succinctly is what uh, sir has explained and coming from sir i think it's so authentic and it should be taken so much uh, actually by everybody every student who watches this video either today they are watching it live or they are going to watch it sometime later i think this is something which they should take to their heart because uh, uh, you, we are hearing from a person who is actually on the, they are the professors of iit they are uh, as uh, we just now heard from the sir also they are actually the policy makers of education implementation of that policy etc is actually taking place by them and uh, this is probably is going to be the rule for 2021 and as well as ahead that we need to adapt we need to be flexible 
the rigid mindset or thinking that i just go through this book i just complete the syllabus i just you know cram up certain subject matter and that's how i actually be um, getting success in life probably is not going to be uh, the mindset for success so that's the summary of what sir said i welcome everybody who has come for the program and uh, the efforts of arjuna group uh, especially people like jain sir as well as many many people actually in arjuna those who have been successful iitians and they are actually coming forward for giving back to the society uh, i would say it's very laudable and it should be it's something to be supported by everybody and especially this program is uh, meant to give the right type of inspiration at the right time to the students who are right now in the very formative years so i always say this that the youth the teenage which all the students who are watching this program the teenage or the youth the period of life which you are all in is uh, the most vital period of life uh, if i have to give an analogy here let me take an analogy to explain this if you compare life to be like a train then the youth is like the engine of this train whichever direction the engine is moving that's the direction the train actually will be landing the destination will be towards that direction similarly whatever attitudes whatever values a young student adopts a young student learns that's exactly is going to frame the destiny of that student because throughout our life we will be implementing those values and we will be putting those attitudes into practice so therefore if i have to say something that the young student should surely do it is that they should refine their attitude it is that they should learn what is the right attitude for living and therefore i i say that these values of life values to live life are very very critical and probably they should be made as a compulsory subject for every teenager who is going to go through their life ahead uh, so i would say this kind of value education learning about the attitude learning about the life skills we must all spend some time for this because spending some time today can actually save a lot of difficulties lot of troubles lot of disasters which can come otherwise we need to prepare ourselves for what's going to come in the future so just studying maths physics chemistry or any other engineering or medical or any subject that's not going to be sufficing as as sir said just some time before this attitude of adaptability for example this need this needs to be learned this needs to be focused this needs, needs to be understood in different situation how to apply it so let me continue the talk ahead and today i am going to talk about how we can turn dreams into reality just before that i'll explain that what do what do i mean by an authentic dream so let me just uh, i have a small ppt to share with all of you i'll just uh, share this let's begin our talk and discussion for for the day so here i am let me just uh, share this with you all yeah so this seminar this webinar is exclusively for the students who are preparing for the board and the competitive exams and definitely it's a tough time it's a challenging time you need to put everything which you have into you know those few hours of the exam be it board or be it any competitive exam like je or neat etc so uh, students have a lot of dreams as as this as this poster which actually is in front of you it suggests that people would not want to go into the dream colleges as they say so they have certain dreams in life i want to go into this place to study to make my career etc how do we exactly make our dreams into reality what do we need to have in us what should we focus upon we fulfilling our dreams let's talk about that when i'm talking about the dreams let me tell you that everybody sees dreams however very few work towards making it into a reality right but the fact of life is that we may be dreaming either in the night uh, while we are asleep so that's called as a night dream or even when we are actually studying our books and we are not able to figure out oh, what's it's so difficult we, we may start day dreaming as it says right so while solving an empirical while studying some difficult subject we may just go off and we may feel it's too hard <laughs> and we may start day dreaming so whether it's a night dream or whether it's a day dream i am not talking about such dreams 
I am not talking about the dreams which make you inactive, which don't make you active in the real world. I am talking about dreams from a very different perspective. Let me explain this. Dream does not become a reality simply by dreaming. It becomes a reality by acting on it. Therefore, I say this to people that uh, there is only one place. Let me tell you this. There's only one place where success comes before work. There is only one place, you know, where success comes before work. And you know, what is that place? The place is called as dictionary. And that is because S comes before W. <laughs> so only in a dictionary, you can get success before work. In real life, you need to do work to get success. It's not just by dreams you can become successful. You need to invest your time, your energy, your resources, your everything, your hard work in order to be successful. So I am not talking about the night dreams. I am not talking about the daydreams. I am talking about those dreams which spring you into action, which means you basically start working hard to realize those dreams because they're dear to your heart. So we may have so many different ideas of you know how to get success. Let's uh, let's see the authentic formula of how to become successful today. Back to my screen. Yeah. So in order to turn dreams into reality, you just need two things, dear friends. If you are taking notes, and I always suggest that taking notes probably helps a lot because you know if you have something to look at, you know after this program gets over after let's say tomorrow etc you could just revise you could reframe your mind's attitude merely by reading few good sentences so here is one something which you can actually write down what is required to turn dream into reality i'm just going to tell, tell you two things are required that's all let's see what are they number one your dream what you need to do what do you what are the two things required to turn dream into reality there are only two things number one it's your dream you need your dream and second is you need your motivation to turn it into reality exactly this is what my subject matter of discussion is let's see how do we understand these two steps properly before i before i go ahead i'm going to speak about the four steps etc it's going to be next half an hour which i'll i'm going to discuss and uh, please hear with your open mindset as, as i say here what i need from you is it's on your screen you need to change the wrong in case if you see that probably you have certain wrong understanding of life probably you, you probably thought in a wrong way i request you change the wrong if you see some right attitude in you if you see that something you already was doing is right according to what we are discussing here you can accept it you can keep it and it should rise beyond the impracticals this session can actually be a life transforming session if you give your full attention to what we are speaking let's go ahead so what do i mean by the step one which is called as your dream sometime before dr satyanarayan has just touched upon that i mean, I, I would say that's a really critical thing because if you want to turn your dream into reality you need to have your own dream so my question to you is is your dream truly yours that's a very very important question you may be thinking i want to go to this college i want to go to that college i want to get this degree i want to get that degree so many different things you might be thinking but my question is is this truly your dream to get into a college like iit nit or aims or anything else jipper or anything else is this truly your dream to become an engineer is this truly your dream to become a doctor is it truly your dream to become a lawyer or you are given the dream by some peer pressure is it that you are looking around uh, some of the students in your own neighborhood or maybe in the uh, the school which you are studying and you know they all are saying you know what they are all going to prepare for iit je and you feel like under pressure you feel i mean you know those who are not preparing for iits look like a little foolish they look like oh you know uh, they are not going to go do anything great in life so is it that under pressure is it that you are deciding to get into some college not because you want to go there but it's because probably your friends are talking about it and you under under pressure feel like maybe i should also study for this but think about this there are a lot of people i have been meeting thousands and thousands of students probably lakhs of students in the last so many years 
and this is one thing which i have found that most people are not actually motivated they don't have their own dreams toward going going to a particular college um i i for a few for for a year or so i was actually teaching in one engineering college so i was teaching one batch uh, in in a college and uh, i gave them an exam you know so it was their mid term exam and i was teaching computer science batch you know this was probability and statistics which i was teaching there so in the middle in the mid term i gave this paper to the students and uh, you know many of them were not getting good marks so i tried my best to teach them in the right way give them good notes uh, give them proper explanations uh, right sources everything so i and in fact even i offered them that after the college gets over there is one hour period you could come and you can meet me you can have interaction and you can see if uh, this helps uh, after doing all of that when i saw that there was around 25% of the students in that college they were not just getting good marks you know they were just um, even after doing whatever so i called them for a meeting and i asked what do you think can we do about this is there something which you feel i should be changing in my teaching style or you know what can we do together let's think about it so you, i was very surprised when most of the students you know who actually were not faring well at all uh, they came back and they said that actually sir uh, you know you are trying your best and uh, that's all very good sir but you know uh, we don't want to study uh, i said you know you are in an engineering college you are in your second year third year so why is it that you should not be studying why do you don't want to study so they said actually we never wanted to do engineering so that took me by surprise and uh, you know i said but you know you are spending lakhs of rupees be in this institution you are spending lakhs of rupees your parents probably would have spent so much of amount of money for your fees even you in your 11th and 12th and now you know you are spending four vital youthful energetic years of your life into this degree and you tell me that you don't want to study it you don't want to be doing engineering they said yes sir that's exactly what we were telling you know we told to our parents you know but our parents said no you have to if you want to get a good career you must go into uh, engineering college and you must get that degree uh, now if we are in such a situation if you any one of the person if any student is in such a situation let me tell you this is a recipe of disaster in life so i was i met i, I keep meeting a lot of people in my service to motiv- motivate them in my service to add some value to their life so there was one gentleman of around 60 62 years he was a retired person and from a very respectable background in a conversation to him i asked so sir how was your work life you know tell me about because you got retired now you're 62 63 so uh, what is it like uh, how was your work life and you know suddenly his face went down totally and you know with a lot of sadness in his face you know he said 30 years of my life i was working in a place where i didn't want in a career which i didn't want i said wow what's that how sad it is you see i don't want any one of you to have this regret in your life i could not do what i wanted to do i could not do what i wanted to do i was pushed by certain peer pressure or certain pressure environment to do something which people said can give me success believe me if you want to be successful truly you need to have your dream if you don't have your dream i can't help you to achieve it so start having your own dream that's the number one thing required to tre- turn dream into reality let me tell you something more a practical example one more thing you know what's the difference between having your dream and others dream some of you may say is it wrong to fulfill my parents dream to fulfill my neighbor's dream or fulfill somebody else's dream it's all fine that's not a very i don't say it's wrong okay? but what i want to say if it's not your dream what happens to you there is a difference between your dream and others dream and what's exactly the difference the difference is just just like you have a difference between your child and the neighbor's child so there was this woman uh, whose child was blind from the birth and when gentleman asked this lady uh, madam what's the name of your child and she with tears in her eyes she, she said oh my the name of my child you know she is such dear so dear to me uh, the name of my child is uh, padma lochan uh, now for uh, for those of you know sanskrit a little sanskrit what does padma lochan mean padma lochan means one who has eyes like a lotus 
Now this child was blind from the birth, yet the mother had put the name Padma Lochan because she has just so much of love for the child, right? So there is a lot of difference between having your own child and dealing with the neighbor's child. With your own child, you have an inner motivation to do something because there is a spontaneous affection and love which comes, especially between the mother and the child, right? And for the other's child, you may want to serve. You may feel it as your duty to help them, your duty to do something for them. But it doesn't come very spontaneously from your heart. That's exactly the difference between trying to fulfill your dream and someone else's dream, right? If you have your dream, there is a spontaneous, heartfelt inner motivation which drives you to achieve it. Otherwise, life is difficult. So that's the number one thing which you need to turn the dreams into reality. Have your own dreams. So let me get, get back to the slides now. So uh, there is a lot of uh, people who actually don't have their own dreams. They probably borrow their dreams from peers. That means their friend circle, uh, parents. Uh, that's in India, it's quite a lot actually. A lot of pressure sometimes comes. Uh, social pressure, that means a society which you live in, somebody wants to become an artist, but probably that type of a job is not very um, socially respected. So therefore they, they borrow their dreams from others. Teachers pressure, sometimes even the teachers actually say, if you want to be successful, you know, you should be in this college or that college or this or that. Mind pressure, <laughs> that means uh, one's own imaginations, one's, one's own insecurity or feeling of, uh, uh, I will not be, I, I'll not be seen in limelight, you know, if, uh, uh, if I am not preparing for this or that exam. So please try to avoid such pressures when you actually form your own dreams, right? So that's number one thing. Dear students, if you can follow this advice, I'll tell you, uh, your life can be very different. Uh, I am writing several books. I've written books for the students. I'm also writing now the books for the, for the parents and in fact also for the teachers. Because in my service to the society, I believe this, that unless a person is following their own dream, their contribution factor to this society and to themselves is very much compromised. So if we want a good society, if we want a good nation, we definitely have to inspire people to do what they can do the best from their heart. So that's uh, something which even the parents should also help the students to do. If any parent is watching this program, this is something for you. Uh, my dear sir, my dear ma'am, please prepare your, don't prepare the path for your child, Prepare the child for the path which he wants to follow. That's my advice for the parents also. So let's get back to the slide. Hmm. So working under pressure leads to a lot of insecurity, a lot of comparisons. And we hear about a lot of people you know, even attempting suicide because of such reasons. It kills one's individuality. Hmm. So the best way to kill individuality of a person is to not allow them to follow their dreams. Okay. Also, it leads to a lot of unbalanced life. When you are not following your dreams, you know, you become a lot quite unbalanced. And therefore, another tip which I would like to give you, another advice, a very important advice which I want to give you is we need to balance our life, which happens quite naturally if we actually have dreams which are natural, which are actually our own. So what are the four things which one needs to balance? Here is the slide which tells you the physical, the career, the emotional, and the spiritual. There is another seminar which I give on the balancing of life. But I just need to introduce you. Life, you can view like a car. Okay? So just like a car has to have all the four wheels balanced. In the same manner, in life, these are the four wheels or the four dimensions which one needs to balance. Physical refers to your health. Career refers, of course, to your studies which you do, especially right now in 11th and 12th or 10th. That's your board or your competitive exam which you're studying for. So that's the very critical and vital one. But also your emotions. So you need to have healthy set of relationships, at least for, with friends, with parents, like that. And the spiritual, which refers to the wisdom and the value system which you have in life, which also is required. And I believe the spiritual dimension is very helpful to balance up the life. So this is something which uh, probably uh, people can take note of. Uh, increasing spiritual wisdom and towards the end of the session, I will also talk about how do we increase the spiritual dimension? <laughs> now, here is, a, here, is a, here is something which you see a balanced person. If on the left side, if you see, here is a balanced person, a person uh, who has all the body parts quite balanced, right? right? So the arms are uh, quite good, 
the stomach muscles are quite good everything you know legs etc it's all balanced but here is how a unbalanced person looks like you know so all the energy has been put into the arms what about the stomach it's no, it's no longer existing probably the arms uh, the legs are not there so it's not a balanced person in the same manner if a student is putting all his or her attention on the career side but uh, doesn't put attention on the physical health he doesn't put uh, doesn't get proper rest doesn't have proper diet doesn't do exercise so then it's going to be challenging for the success in the long run also if it does not have proper relationships which is also very critical vital factor of life especially i believe in the teenage because most people in my opinion my understanding and interactions with them i have seen that they are facing a lot of emotional issues so i believe that everybody needs a few friends need to have good relationship with the mother and the father and if the teachers can also be little more um what do you call benevolent and little more aligned to help the students that would be a very great emotional bonding actually especially if somebody gets a good teacher a mentor you know they actually do quite better than anybody else you know despite their iq levels uh, so uh, another thing as i said the spiritual side which is the value system which we have today what you are learning is basically the wisdom the spiritual So the side, the quotient, which can actually help you balance everything and help you success in life. So, uh, getting back to this, I have told till now about the desire, about your dream, that it should be your dream, and if it is not your dream, what happens to you? That's what is explained. Now, let me tell you further. There are four D's for the second step, right? To get the right motivation to success, I have divided into four steps now. Okay, so there are four D's. So easy to remember. is it remember four d's by which you can turn your dream so till now my time went in explain that it should be your dream so your dream into reality requires this four d's in order for you to be able to remember d 1 2 3 and 4 what are these four d's you are going to see now i am going to speak this in next 20 minutes so probably 5 into 4 5 minutes for each of this please here you are going to hear some very interesting stories uh, it could be something very inspiring Uh, let's see further so what is the first d which actually is required to turn dream into reality desire let's talk about that in some time second is dedication third is discipline and the fourth is destiny let's talk about desire so do you know about mahatma gandhi of course everybody he is called as the father of the nation right so uh, this one man had a desire what was the desire that let india be an independent nation this was a great desire i mean to make the country independent is not a small desire it's a great desire but because he had this strong desire what happened today we are independent now let's talk about uh, this man a very great scientist his his name is thomas alva edison so thomas dr thomas alvedison was the one who actually invented the bulb but do you know before he invented the bulb he failed more than 10000 times now that's it a lot sometimes you are not able to solve some questions we fail in that sometimes a few assignments etc are not going well some few uh, some few unit tests or tests in the school or any anywhere you are studying any coaching etc you are studying so they are not going well and people become very discouraged well you know if there is strong desire to be successful right if there is a strong desire to be successful you know failures or the obstacles they become opportunities in your life to go ahead to learn something that how not to do and go ahead in life so therefore there has to be a strong desire to be successful that's the first d you should work upon your desire once you have your dream make your desire strong okay strong desire that i want to achieve this is absolutely must and absolutely required somebody asked thomas alva edison that how could you fail so many times and yet you know go ahead in life so, uh, he replied i didn't fail 10000 times well i just discovered what does not work 10000 times and finally when i had so many ways which i should not have worked i arrived at a point where i did what was necessary to actually invent that bulb so this kind of a positive attitude is something which comes along with having a strong desire 
you know when there is weak desire what happens when there is weak desire even a small obstacle people start you know putting oh my god i can't do this or corona has come oh my god uh, this is problem this is a challenge this is a difficulty how can i do that so then there are many excuses so remember this excuses are given by people those who do not have strong desire right if you have the strong desire you will not give any excuses you will not say oh this challenge is so difficult that challenge is so difficult no what will you do is you will understand this is not the way to go ahead let me change as uh, dr satyarayan very uh, beautifully mentioned adapt adapt according to the situation and okay this is not going to work this is how i will try if this is not going to work this is how i will try this is not going to work this is how i will try my desire is so strong that it comes along with a positive attitude right so there is something more to desire here let's let's see what is it on my slide so your desire should be strong but also it should be um second what it should be let's see this is a story on secret of success here i want to introduce to all of you i'll speak a few things today to all of you right now but if you also want to watch further if you want to be connected connect to this arjuna group you want to be connected to me uh, we have this channel which you are on in this youtube channel and we have a lot of videos which we share so let me also show to you my you know the channel which we are actually having in which we we actually have a lot of videos especially the, the few things which i am talking to you they are actually there right there on our channel so let me show to you here is where you find our channel uh, this is the channel if you see you 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 basically have amaram das official if you type this on the youtube you actually get this channel right there is a lot of videos which we have here i am actually going to speak a little bit now from this particular video you have here right this uh, secret of success so i i just wanted to introduce you there are various topics which we have been uploading the videos um, many many videos we are uploading every week at least one this is a great source of continued motivation for anybody who wants to come here you can subscribe to this channel you can ask others if the, you find it useful to also subscribe you can press the bell icon in order to get the mind of for when the videos are uploaded so that you can get the uh, and you can also watch it so that's just in, in order to explain to you that uh, this is not the only time when we actually meet through our channel you could be in connection with us and we keep giving webinars uh, on very large scale several times especially for the students but also for the parents just like on 17th of this month of january this new year uh, 17th of january we are actually going to have a program for the parents also so you can be connected with us here you could actually inform others those who could be benefited so i was talking about desire let me talk about the story of socrates socrates of course was a greek philosopher and when he was asked by a, a person sir can you please tell me the secret of success and socrates said yes yes of course i can tell you you know but uh, for you to for you to uh, know the secret you don't i can't tell you here come along with me there on the bank of the river early in the morning and i am going to tell you the secret uh, the student was like you know so much an excitement and then next day morning he was right ready he went uh, on the bank of the river and he finds socrates over there socrates told him yes i am going to tell you the secret of success but not here on the bank i uh, let's let's go inside the water inside the river there so <laughs> the student was like <laughs> inside the river okay let's go so <laughs> and the uh, socrates catches the hand very tightly of this boy and takes him inside uh, takes him inside the river water and the river water is slowly coming up coming up coming up coming up coming up coming up right up to the neck <laughs> and the student is thinking i mean what, what's going to happen here you know how is he going to tell me the secret of success right now here in this situation suddenly before even the student could realize socrates catches his neck and dunks him inside the water and the the, the, the child was uh, 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 he was getting choked he was just trying to come out but the socrates was very strong he didn't allow him to cut, come out and the child was just so inside after it just, just one minute pass one and a half minute pass and he was turning blue at that time socrates released him and he came out of the water gasping for him <laughs> he was still alive <laughs> he was still alive socrates asked him well you wanted to know the secret of success right uh, the student replied <laughs> yes sir <laughs> so uh, he said i'll tell you the i'll tell you the secret now 
um, tell me one thing. I Socrates asked the student, "Tell me one thing. What is that one thing which you were very desperately looking for when you were inside the water?" And the student replied, "Of course, air. <laughs> I was looking for air when I was inside the water." And Socrates said something which is so meaningful for all of you to hear this. He said, "When you want success." as desperately as you wanted air it's then when you get it i'll repeat when you want success as desperately as you wanted air that's when you get it dear friends to achieve great things in life this kind of strong desire is absolutely necessary but let me tell you a little more some people ask me sir okay i have this strong desire sometimes you know but you know the the curve of my enthusiasm is like you know sine wave all of you know the sine wave i'm sure everybody knows the sine wave it goes up but then it goes down to zero but it goes down to negative and then goes up slowly and then goes down to negative you know so you say this is how my curve of enthusiasm is so i tell them along with your desire is strong you need to add another factor to your desire that it should be selfless dear students anybody who is watching this program please know this attitude of life if you want to be motivated for long time work for a higher purpose don't just work to benefit yourself i want to get into iit because uh, i'll get good money i'll get good fame etc well fine i'm not saying it's wrong you do get that you know anybody who is in iit probably everybody gets some fame they also get money that's all there that's all there okay but we don't consciously keep thinking i'm going to get this i'm going to get this as the dr satyanara i think he very beautifully has explained the right attitude of a student i mean he is really i mean his few words were so wonderful probably my whole session i am just explaining the same thing little more elaborately for us to understand it well right he said that uh, you know you need to have the right attitude it's not for me i am entering into this college i want to serve a selflessness selflessness in the desire i want to serve i want to serve my nation i want to serve probably my community my society i want to serve god i want to serve humanity i mean that selflessness is absolutely must if you want to stay motivated for long time okay so that's the first d of desire let's go to the second d we talk that desire should be strong and should be selfless in order to turn the dreams into reality next factor is right here on my screen i is talk about dedication second d is dedication dedication means the quality of being committed to the purpose or task right so how do we have this dedication let's talk about it. this dedication is absolutely was i'll talk to you talk to you about a beautiful story this is a brooklyn bridge which connects the two cities of manhattan and brooklyn and uh, very beautiful so in 1869 this uh, bridge the proposal to build this bridge came and at that time dr engineer john robling at that time was very famous to build bridges like this and he was immediately appointed to build this bridge They, they they conceived of the longest bridge the broadest bridge ever made in the world right uh, but there was something unfortunate which happened such a task was obviously a very impossible task a task which is, was so challenging for everybody and uh, john rabling was like committed for it i want to do it he was so dedicated it was almost like an impossible task with all the um machines which were there with all the technology which was there it was really really challenging but john he was committed he was dedicated but what happened john unfortunately just after some time when the bridge was the it's they started building the bridge just in some few months what happened to him he got severely wounded his foot got severely wounded in, in the construction site and he got tetanus and he died he died due to tetanus he could not fulfill his dream although he was dedicated but 
his son who was almost in his mid 30s at that time he took up his father's dream he had the strong desire within his heart i want to complete this i want to complete this bridge and he was also an engineer he was also a construction engineer so he was immediately appointed and he started working day and night to work to on this project it was a great challenge because he did not have the experience of what his father had but he had that dedication right he had the dedication he was committed unfortunately just after some time and the son took up this opportunity even he also underwent a disaster a sad accident he didn't die but his entire body became paralyzed let me tell you in this building of this bridge they had to go underground and do the constructions etc with the technology and the machines available of that time as i am telling you many people considered this to be an impossible task okay but you know uh, john robling and then his son washington he was like very much dedicated and he wanted to do it however he also suffered from an accident such a severe accident that he was paralyzed on the bed he could not even speak anything the entire part of his body was still nothing was moving except one finger is one finger which you can move but all the other parts of his body he could not move in such a paralyzed state also he had this burning desire and he had therefore dedication i want to complete this project which was given to me by my father to my father's last desire i want to do it so therefore he spoke to his wife whose name was emily this is a very great success story such a dedication such dedication to this work right so therefore with just one finger working and he started communicating to his wife emily who was communicating to the construction engineers on the site his wife was not an engineer she had never studied civil engineering and all construction design nothing she had studied but even then when she became the mediator you know, they devised the entire language by just one finger if you if if he taps here what he means to say if he taps you know two times what he means to say if he taps three times what he means to say if he presses what he wants to say just by movement of one finger they devise a language a code language of how to communicate and that's how washington he communicated to emily and emily communicated to the construction engineers and believe me after some time after a few years construction engineers by under the guidance of washington who was paralyzed in the hospital at that time they completed this project it was impossible becoming possible because the second factor the second b which is needed for turning dreams into reality and that is dedication you need to be dedicated to the cause you need to be committed you know what is the meaning of being committed being committed means i will make it happen right i will make it happen whatever it takes it might take some sacrifice i am not telling you to do sacrifice in the sense of you do not take care of your physical dimension emotional dimension or spiritual dimension that's not called as a sacrifice it would be rather very silly that's not the right sacrifice sacrifice means i can sacrifice my pleasure some of the people they complain that you know i have this uh, uh, mo- mo- mobile games etc you know I, i don't know how to do what to do about that uh, i'm distracted so much in the games i am uh, you know caught up in the movies and you know uh, so much of distracting environment well distractions disappear when there is dedication dedication means i am committed let me make some personal sacrifice if that's what is required but i am committed to make this into a reality that's exactly what you need as a second d and let me tell you a little more understanding about this d on my slide here how do you get this kind of dedication <laughs> so i say here selfless purpose is a tremendous powerful way to stay dedicated quite interesting right so if you add selflessness into your desires you can be made motivated for long time and that selfless purpose can also bring out from you dedication and was it not that mahatma gandhi was actually so dedicated because he was so selfless also because he had a selfless purpose uh, many of the scientists etc they come come out with a discovery because their hearts are wanting to remove some problem or evil in the society 
right? So therefore, uh, to remain dedicated, having a selfless purpose is a very great benediction. So let's talk about the third D. The third D is right here, which is called as discipline, right? You need the third D, which is discipline. What do you mean by discipline? Well, in very uh, uh, discipline exactly means to control one's own mind, to not lose control over one's mind despite difficulties, challenges, or troubles, or some uh, some uh, some good situations around you, some pleasures around you. So it's basically self-control, mind control. Now uh, here is where I want to tell you something from Bhagavad Gita uh, because actually Arjuna was also very in a very perplexed situation. Uh, he was not he was not able to get some right motivation to actually fight and he wanted to leave the from the battlefield but at that time uh, this teachings of lord shri krishna in the bhagavad gita are very very beautiful is there on the screen if you please uh, see this shloka this is very very beautiful it says kanchalam hi manah krishna nati balavadradam asya ham nigraham manne vayore vaso dushkaram so very beautiful so he says that uh, arjuna is saying to krishna that you know what Uh, i can probably control the wind also now uh, for you for you know that how difficult it is to control the wind if there is a storm if there is a hurricane it's very challenging you know you cannot control the wind the wind just blows away everything right there may be concrete stones there may be uh, the big big buildings but if there is a tornado there is a hurricane happens it just makes everything fly it can make the cars also fly the the buildings also fly so control a wind is probably not possible for anybody but arjuna said i am so powerful i can actually even control the wind but then he kneels down in front of shri krishna and says the person arjuna who can control the wind not control the mind what should i do lord krishna arjuna submits his appeal in front of krishna and says can you please help me and krishna says of course i can help you i will teach you something which is higher than the mind because the forces which are lower than the mind cannot control the mind something which is higher than the mind can control the mind yes yes or no correct so uh, the mind's energy is so much you need a source of energy higher than that and therefore lord shri krishna talks about the self the self in the bhagavad gita so he says that um is right here on the screen for you to see so there are senses higher than the senses is the mind but the higher than the mind is the self and lord shri krishna says if you can uh have you if you can understand that this self which is within you in of course krishna says that as atma within the body right the soul in the body says the soul this atma the self has so much of power which can be unleashed through meditation krishna teaches that in the bhagavad gita that through meditation you can actually control your mind right so there are various forms of meditation here's when the spirituality actually comes into picture quite a lot uh, you, believe me you will be surprised that people who add spirituality in their life some sort of meditation some chanting of certain mantras etc every day you know they can have much better focus on their mind now this is a proven study this is a proven study which actually is seen in it's an, something which is practical which you can also see in your life take this advice from me i adding a little bit of spirituality 10 15 minutes a day at least right maybe chanting of certain mantras maybe you can just take up bhagavad gita you can even recite few shlokas of the gita daily this was my personal habit you know i would like to go, say when i was a, like a student like you in 10th 11th 12th Uh, this used to be one of my meditations every day in the morning i would wake up and then uh, read a few shlokas of the gita every day uh, recite sanskrit shlokas and try to think about the meaning for some around 10 15 days minutes uh, it was really amazing uh, it just used to give me such enthusiasm and this has been experience of a lot of people in this world therefore mahatma gandhi also used to speak about from the bhagavad gita there are many many people actually many learned people who would say that this is probably one book which is absolutely must for a teenager like you right to read a little if you don't even understand at least recite it and of course if you can understand the science in that that's really amazing so uh, some sort of spirituality if it is added at the right time right then it can have wonders especially for the mind control which is absolutely essential and that's exactly called as discipline it's a third d which you require in order for you to 
change, convert your dream into reality. Now we talk about the 4D. Despite all these human endeavors, we have the right desire, the strong, the selfless desire. We have our own dreams. That's the zeroth D. <laughs> right? We have our own desire, strong and selfless. We are having the dedication and we have the discipline. But yet you require the fourth factor, which is called as time factor by some and some others call it as the fourth D, which I say as D for destiny. There is something beyond all of us. Let's see my slide here, which we talk about the fourth D, which I say about destiny. Dear friends, dear students, I want to tell you, there are forces beyond us, which actually shape our own life, right? So human endeavor can, can only go to a certain extent, but beyond that, where are we? <laughs> we, have, we are tiny beings in this world. So therefore, I always tell this to students, do not think that only cracking IITJ or NEET or any such exam is the final ultimate goal of life. Don't, I say it this way, don't consider these dreams or these aims or these colleges like the mountain peaks. Consider these going into these colleges or getting into the uh, crack, cracking uh, these uh, exams, etc. like a ladder. Don't consider them like a mountain peak, the final destination to achieve. No, they are not. As Sir also told, uh, Dr. Satyanarayan also told about that. It's not that IIT is the end of life, you know. I got into IIT, that's done, you know. <laughs> I don't have to do anything in life. No, 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 no. Definitely not. You have so much to do after coming, going into IIT or um, any medical institute or engineering institute or any institute for that matter, right? It's not the end. It's not the mountain peak. It's a ladder. It's a ladder which takes you upward. Not that it's a final destination. If you have this kind of right understanding, dear students, please take note of this. If you have this right understanding, what will happen? If one ladder is not working, you will change the ladder, right? If this one ladder cannot take you up, you're not able to climb it, you take another ladder in which, through which you can climb. You have to go high, it is fixed. You have to probably go to the, you know, you go on the top of the mountain. You have to achieve success in life. That is wonderful. But if one ladder is not working, we take another ladder. Therefore, I say these kind of exams, competitive exams, this kind of, you know, uh, the, the going into in, in, entering into some college, etc., should not be considered as the mountain peaks, the final destination. This should be considered as the ladders. In case... We are trying our best. We have all the other three Ds. But if the destiny doesn't favor, we must still not be landing up into these colleges, which is not a problem. Because as I said, we can change our ladders. Right? There are many factors beyond our human control. For example, coronavirus. Right? So therefore, I know many students who probably become so who became so frustrated because of this coronavirus. There are people who become sick due to unknown factors. You know, despite trying their best, you know, just before exam, they got some you know problem. They could not write the exam itself. You know, or somebody was going you know to, to the entrance exam, but then they had some accident or some something happened in, on the way. So there are things beyond human control, and that's exactly what we call as destiny, right? If uh, it's not. Uh, if we have done our best, but yet we are not able to enter into some college, we should not feel morose. As I said, that's not the end of life. It's just nothing. But I change my ladder. And you can get to this. Many of the students, many of the people, or the volunteers, many of the mentors who are actually working with Arjuna Group to take advice personally in case if you need and if you feel that I, I become hopeless, etc. No. Uh, there are many videos on my YouTube channel again, which where I, one of the videos which I talk about is the flexi. I talk about rule of flexibility in life. You see, we need to be flexible. If one ladder is not working, I take another ladder, but I should go above. I should continue uh, try my efforts to become successful in life, right? Not to become hopeless. That's why I added this fourth D there. Dreams to turn into reality also need the fourth D is destined. Destiny must favor you, my dear, right? 
otherwise the human endeavors can only go to some extent so let's uh, also wind up our today's program a little bit more explanation on destiny factor so is not this i say it this way success is the union of our endeavor and god's favor you need both to become successful please say this is see this is union is i'm not talking about destiny in the sense that uh, uh, you know what anyway everything is destined so you know you just need to sleep <laughs> in my time management book in case if you read that i have given a lot of details about this I gave a race course analogy, which today I am not having any time to discuss. But you could read these books, Art of Concentration, Time Management, which beautifully explain the secrets of success in life. Right attitude, the right value system, which a student should have. I believe this is something so critical to be actually learned so as to get success. So success is the union of union of our endeavor and God's favor. Both need to be into place. So therefore. Uh, this also helps if people actually have uh, and this is a story now i don't have time much to speak on this story today uh, but uh, there is something which actually the last words of bhagavad gita i would like to share with you it says yatra yogeshwar krishno yatra partha dhanurdhara yatra shri vijaya bhute dhruvane tair mater mama very beautiful words actually a very very hope giving words to everybody it says in short it says that one whoever is on the dharma side if you have the right intention in your heart right right intention to serve the right intention to do something good in this world if you are following the dharma so krishna says here again i mean the gita says in this verse that anybody yatra yogeshwara krishna yatra partha dhanurdhara tatra shri vijaya bhuter having right intentions is an assurance towards getting success in life following dharma is an insurance towards getting success in life so dear students start following dharma anybody who is on the side of the dharma finally will meet success for example battlefield of kurukshetra is a famous one for that famous example for that so though in the beginning of the battle the situation was very odd for the pandavas you know it was very very much set against them right there were only few whereas the kauravas were so powerful and so many and so mighty but because the pandavas they followed dharma they went towards the dharma side finally they were emerging victorious dear student in your own life right if you want the destiny factor to go towards your side do not have ill intentions or wrong means to get success in life right the wrong when we start cheating when we start trying to do something which is uh, not uh, ethical right that's not something which is going to give you long lasting success it may give you some short term success but not long lasting one so remember we having ethics on our side following dharma following higher spiritual purpose values in life will be an assurance towards success so these are the four d's I tell you about the first one So zeroth one is your dream not somebody else's dream your dream and se- second step which is about motivation if you you get it by four d's desire dedication discipline and destiny it was so good to all of you to have you as an audience today i hope that this session would have helped you uh, if it has helped uh, helped you please give your comments on this uh, below on the uh, the comment se- 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 section which is there so you could actually tell us you can also tell us on what topics we can give the webinars to all of you as i also said that on 17th probably we are also 20th of this january we are also probably giving a seminar for the parents and uh, therefore you can welcome you can invite your friends your parents your elders anybody who wants to receive right motivation in life is welcome on this channel we are very happy to serve you we want to increase the positivity in this world we want to increase happiness in this world we are very grateful right in the new year a very happy new year to all of you we want to give it from marjuna to you all so therefore brought to you this seminar very very grateful for the efforts of all the people those who helped us today to make this program a success thank you so very much and all the best to every single person who is today watching this video or any time in the future will watch this video thank you so much in case if there are any questions uh, probably they can be sent to me and i can try to answer them
Yeah. So back to you, Mr. Jain. You could uh, probably take it further. Uh, we also thank uh, Dr. Satyanarayan sir. Uh, he has been so kind actually to give his time, very very valuable time to us today evening. And I'm sure that the students would be, you know, so happy to hear from sir. Uh, thank you, thank you, sir. Thank you, Mr. Jain. Uh, you can take ahead the program. Uh, yes, sir. Thank you so much. Uh, now, I hand over. Uh, so I thank uh, you, sir, uh, Amal sir, for kindly enlightening the students, as well as uh, for the presence of Satyanar and sir for the today evening. Thank you so much. Now I request not to take over for the announcements. Hello. Hello. A very good evening uh, to all of you. Uh, I'm sure that all of you had a wonderful learning experience in the webinar. Uh, we hope that it really helps you in turning your dreams to reality. So if you want to learn more about this and other essential principles for success in career as well as life, please keep watching the many videos which are already uploaded on our YouTube channel and uh, many more that will be uploaded in the future. Also, uh, as announced in the beginning, we have two publications by Amal sir on art of concentration and uh, time management. So I would like to tell about them. Yeah. So, and uh, we have a special offer only for the next 24 hours for all of our webinar attendees. And uh, now you can avail any of our books with 25% discount price. So the Art of Concentration books, which uh, original price is 200 rupees, uh, is available only at rupees 149. And Time Management book, which uh, original price is 400 rupees, is available only at rupees 299. So these are very, very useful books, which are recommended by toppers of the top 10 AIR of the various competitive exams like IIT, JEE, AIMS, and uh, board toppers also. And I have personally read these books in my life and found them very, very beneficial and useful uh, at, uh, at my student life at IIT Madras. So uh, my dear friends, please take advantage of this. And uh, for ordering the books, uh, we will share a Google form link in the live chat. So whoever wants to order the books for themselves, they can kindly uh, click on that link and uh, you'll be led to a Google form where you have to fill your details. Uh, and uh, for uh, especially the webinar attendees, we have a coupon code which you will have to enter in the Google form in order to avail of this uh, offer of 25% discount. And uh, that coupon code is uh, Arjuna21. So I repeat, uh, the coupon code is Arjuna21. And uh, that coupon code also will be put in the live chat. So, yeah. So... Uh, thank you very much and uh, please do connect to us uh, on YouTube, Facebook and Instagram and uh, you might already already be in the WhatsApp group of uh, ours so where, uh, where you will uh, keep on getting the updates uh, about our upcoming videos and uh, various uh, other useful things uh, which you can watch. Thank you so much.